Yes, so this is the great, the great hall. Um, it's at the moment, it must have been an event here. I'm, thought, I'm sorry you couldn't see it in all its glory, actually, when, when, the, when the chairs have got sort of, you know, their proper... Um, livery? Livery, yes, and the tables look really very nice. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing sight, actually. Um, so they must have just had an event, event here and they're just clearing up. But this is the great hall. This is where we have our common council meetings. So the whole court, including the aldermen and the councillors, will come here every month and we'll have our meeting in this room for today. It's probably the only room that's big enough to house. I was just wondering if you knew. Um, it's also where we will host the party meetings. So I'll show you what, where they would, how we would introduce them. But like, when we had the president of South Africa here, we would we hosted him in here with about three hundred, no, maybe more, about four hundred to five hundred guests. Mm -hmm. Packed, squeezed in there, we have a spring system. Um, and we would have speeches and, and, and host them in, in this room. Mm. So this is of our main, I would say, yeah, even yeah. hosting room within the within the building. Oh, and the famous Churchill statue that we've been recommended to look from both yeah. sides. Yes, this is the famous uh, Churchill statue. So let's have a look. So of course the Sir Winston <laughs> Churchill. So this is one side of his face, which sort of looks bit sad and pensive and this side I guess looks a little bit more smiley and contented so I think it's more in the cheek yeah it's the cheek that's the difference the dimple is on the right hand side while looking at it yeah uh, over here it's a cleverly made sculpture. Yeah. So, Aaron, this <laughs> space that we are standing in, because we know the Guild Hall is here since 1411, how old is this actual structure that we're standing in? I think this structure is from... from it's, the it's that from old, it actually survived is, is the war. Wow, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, there are some elements which might have been... Uh, I, I, there, I think there was a fire here at some point. Correct. Not yes. the Great Fire of London, but there was yeah. some damage. So the hall as a hall, if I remember correctly, survives back to the 1411 date. But different aspects, such as parts of the roof, have had to be replaced yeah. over the years. I think it also comes back to... Uh, I can't remember the proverb where... It's the family uh, broom or axe or what have you that's had the head replaced a number of times and the handle that's replaced it. a number of times, but it's still the original one that was yes, there, yeah, exactly. even though every part of it has been replaced over the years. Yeah, yeah. That would be a very good uh, analogy, I would say, yes, exactly. Um, and the emblems are on the ceiling. Various coats yes, of arms. Coats, coats of arms. arms. Yes. So, those are actually emblems, I'm still actually trying to find out what they are. But if you look at below the emblems where those those flags are, mm -hmm. um, this is what uh, I was referring to earlier about those those great 12. So you've got 112 livery companies in the city of London, and there was a few uh, new companies. Founding uh, yes. ones. But the founding ones, the, the great, we call them the great 12, are, are represented by their, by their sort of um, coat of arms, their flags here on, on, on the wall. Um, and I know, I, I, I don't know each of them, but I know one of, I think the one that, Far right is the grocers, I believe. Well, where would we be without grocers? We would certainly uh, be a bit hungrier. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to try and, I don't know, I remember all 12. So you've talked to someone who's uh, learning about the city is, rather than being a stalwart uh, with a lot of history in the city. But I do know that I think the, the mercers are number one, merchant tailors are there, the haberdashers, the cloth workers, the goldsmiths. Candle makers? Ironmongers. The candle makers are a company, but they're not in the Great Twelve. Oh. Um, the ironmongers are um, And most of these companies generally have a hall. So the Goldsmiths Hall, the Ironmongers Hall, uh, around the city of London. That's and true. they're probably one of London, the city's best kept secrets, actually, because you, mm. you wouldn't know it by just passing mm -hmm. it. That is yes. uh, a very... And uh, is that true that they're not really allowing visitors to come in and sort of do tours in there, unless it's the uh, open doors day once a year? Different different companies have different rules. I, I'd be surprised if that was the case because they they're generally very open to and they want people to come in. So maybe during we could, COVID, I'm sure maybe we could restrict. try and um, have a, for sure have a, have, a, have a normally their doors are always always open. They're always, they're always doing events and, and I think for their members. 
The, the closest one to our house is actually the clothes makers company. Right. So the clothes makers, yes. Yeah. Right. And they're actually going to be moving, moving soon because their building is going to be redeveloped with a new hall. Um, so if you could try and squeeze in quickly then. Right. Before they be, go. Before they go. It's a lovely hall. And, um, and I should say most of these companies now, of course, um, are not sort of normal. They're not as they were back in the in, in, in history. They are more... Some of them do have a trade. The goldsmiths, for instance, have a goldsmiths fair, and they, are, they actually do um, a lot of trade. But others um, mainly are doing philanthropic efforts, travel efforts. They run some schools. Um, they, they might run some farmhouses. Um, so they, they do a lot of philanthropy that goes on in the city that's probably overlooked. I think that probably collectively, there must be at least 20 to 2, maybe even up to 50 million pounds raised by these things in different ways of how they're putting mm -hmm. their funds out. And of course they all take part in the Lord Mayor's uh, right. Lord Mayor of London parade Correct. in uh, November. November. Lord uh, each shows. year yeah. Lord the Mayor's parade. show Lord Mayor's along show. with the great many charities that operate in the City of London. Correct. And so they will all support it and then some will decide to get a float in that, in that show. And that, yeah. that show is to introduce the Lord Mayor basically to, to the world I suppose. It's one of the most watched event, yeah. events on the BBC. Yeah. And some of those floats I have seen are Incredible. Yeah. incredibly creative, of yeah. not to say crazy. No. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you'll see here in front as well, there might be a specific English term that I need to need again learn. But this is underneath here is where you would have the, the, the top table. If you were to, if you sit in this, in this room, the top table would be up here, this, this uh, line, and then you have the sprigs coming off. And you might have a few extra tables on, on either side. Uh, the Lord Mayor and whoever the guest of honour is, plus some of our senior members will, will sit here at the top and speeches will be given here. Uh, on, a, on, on sort of big occasions, you'll get our trumpeters, like the state, I don't want to say state trumpeters, but definitely uh, sort of that old, sort of the trumpeters would be up on the balcony over here, maybe over this side and sort of call in different um, events and, and different stages of, of, of the dinner. Surprises me a little because I would have expected from everything I've seen on TV and similar mm. for the stage type area to be where the more important people sit. So having it sort of halfway down the hall yeah. is so, interesting to me. I, I think the stage can be removed. So the, okay. the stage will be removed actually uh, for the big dinner. But uh, otherwise, there's, uh, I've actually seen pictures and we'll probably see a painting later on where the head table is here actually okay um, and I don't know what how that's changed why they've changed it I, I have a feeling it's because we have lots of sort of senior dignitaries that they need to include on this top table it's very I think those who do the seating plan yeah, have to like really think about where who's sitting where and everything else um, and it might be too small that's just that's right. area. I, I could also imagine that back in the day, having them sat there with the hierarchical procession down, so yes. somebody down that end, such as the trumpeters, yes. would be seen as less important, where in today's uh, more egalitarian, more right. equal uh, environment, they're wanting to be, you're still having yes. that, but you're wanting everybody to be a bit closer, so having it halfway down the hall, like over here, yes then allows people to be physically closer yeah. and so seem more important. Correct. I think when, when uh, Rishi Sunak came for his the Lord Mayor's banquet, he gives a speech mainly focused on foreign affairs. He did something during the after uh, the main course. He went round actually and went to different sprigs to say hello to different different people, which was the first time I think it's ever been done. Okay. Apparently it's a very uh, common thing in Indian culture actually, to go meet and meet and greet all your guests. But it made it a lot easier for him to be able to just go Different, different ways, rather yes. than have to go from the top end to the bottom end. Slowly yeah. making his But I would say, back. in our council meetings every every month, the aldermen will sit on the top, on, on, on this uh, stage, and the councillors will be here. We're, we're grouped by our ward. So um, you have councillors on the left side, here, the right side, and then I would sit somewhere around here, um, because we're in towers, so we're T, therefore we're further, further back. Oh, um, is so that how it works? That's order, yes. Correct. They don't sort of mix up from time no, no. to time so I, you're always in the same sort of area yeah no no we're always 
I, well, I'm there for life until I, uh, okay. <laughs> unless I move forward. <laughs> no, no, but I wouldn't want to do that. I'd prefer to keep you. Yes, exactly. My favourite part of being in this incredible hall, which is very beautiful, is actually the walls. Because looking at them and looking at all the carvings, I mean, you can see how old this space is and it's just really nice to sort of come up and touch the history. I'm smiling, it's certainly a used tool because you can see the grime at the approximately <laughs> the hand level on the walls right. and as you're going up a little uh, there's a lot less, yeah I know it gets cleaned but you're always going to get something that just These two, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out who these two uh, sort of dark, I don't know. They don't look English. No. So I was thinking the gentleman on the right looks as though he's uh, oriental yes, I, in I, some way. I wonder if they were a gift from, uh, from a yeah. from uh, The gentleman on the left there does look very English in my eye, and so I'm wondering Another one for me to do the heraldry. Yeah. Another one for me to do some research on and find some answers. Okay, well that's a great tour of this hall, and we can move on now. Thank you.